All right, Beth. So if any of you guys do not know, um, all these calls, as I've mentioned on you know previous sessions, I'm gonna record these and I'm gonna throw these up on my YouTube channel. So if you're not able to watch the whole call, you get on late, I'm talking too fast, you have a question, I don't answer, just whatever. All these calls will be recorded and thrown on my YouTube channel. Anyways, <laughs> first thing, excuse me. First thing I want to go over is the setup that we actually took. Um Shout out to you now, Val. I see a few different, a uh, few familiar faces on the call. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. 2022, we got Case Money. We got Marquise. We got it's a few of y'all I see on here. Okay, I appreciate y'all, man. Um, so let's talk about the setup. Before we talk about the setup today, let's talk about the setup that we had to end the year off. Oh, come on, man. Come on, man. Don't act like y'all didn't see the trade. I called out to end off the year. Come on, don't, don't play your boy like that, okay? Now, like anything else, we obviously not going to go undefeated, but we, you know what I'm saying? We're going to do our thing in this chat, right? I ain't the best, but, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm comparable. You feel me? So, this was the setup that we had right here. That bad boy pulled back, and it did that right there. Oh, my goodness. It was beautiful, right? Um, you know, we had take profit one, get hit right here. And then we adjusted our stop loss to break even. Obviously, break even got hit right here. But we already made our money, so we ain't tripping. So what is we about to do? We is about to go over this setup so we got so we can understand why we took it and um how it played out, right? Because the only thing we can move forward, the only way we can move forward is by looking at the past. So we're about to go ahead and look at Euro USD, um, which as you can see, was also called in my chat. When was this called out? December 30th, right? So literally a couple of days before the year ended, it was really good trade. This is what it looked like at the time I sent it out, you know, give you the full markup, so on and so forth. And um, as you guys can see, right, told you to adjust stop loss to break even here. We were up 24 pips at that point. We ended up hitting take profit one for 43 pips, and it ended up maxing out for about uh, 80 pips, as you can see, before it pulled all the way back. So great trade. Um, so let's go ahead and go over it. Uh, all right, but let's go ahead and erase all this. Cool. So, um, you know, as you guys get on these calls more, you'll start getting more familiar with my trading style. And um, like I said, 2022, like I'm telling you, I spent a lot of y'all that have been, you know, tapped into my YouTube channel. I really, really appreciate y'all. But we we not playing no games this year. Like I'm I'm coming for the top spot. Like it's it's if <laughs> your boy is getting paid off of YouTube. And I recommend if you guys have ever thought about starting a YouTube channel. Go ahead and start making some shake. You know, if you feel what I'm saying, don't let me be the only person getting paid off of YouTube. But if I am, trust me, I will gladly take the money. But anyways, with all that being said, my favorite time frame to use is going to be the one hour. OK, so what you're going to end up doing is you go figure out what time frame you like the best. Maybe you use a few different ones. I really focus on one primary and then I'll start flipping. If I see something that I like, it's going to be the one hour. So from the one hour, I like to be able to first off identify what is the overall trend, right? And then the next thing I'm going to identify, okay, what is the overall trend? And then once I figure that out, am I going to be trading with the trend or am I going to be trading against the trend, which will make it a counter trend trade? So this opportunity, as you guys can see, obviously was extremely bearish, okay? Like it, it's, it's, it, it doesn't matter who you are. You could be a child, you could be an infant, you could have no eyes, right? This is a downtrend, right? All the market is doing is literally dropping, right? As you can see. So Obviously, I know that the overall market trend is going to be a downtrend. I got that, right? Now, the next thing I started focusing on is once we identify as a downtrend, this is pretty much where we are now, right? We're really just looking at like this range over here. So the things that you really want to start looking for is you want to look whenever the market creates a floor, right? So the market created a floor right here. So at that point, you see that the market gave us an impulse, right? Now, from this impulse, what you want to start identifying is, did we get any breaks of structure? We did, right? If we look over here to the left, we can see this market broke this structure area. So what exactly does that mean? So whenever you have a previous high point, right, that initiated some type of, you know, downward trend, this last little hump in the road, this is going to be a strong structure right here. So if you were to ever have the market come back up and break this area, that is whenever it would make sense to possibly start looking for more upward momentum. OK, if the market never came back and broke this, it might be a little sketchy for you to start looking for buys. Right. You might could look for some temporary buys up in here. But overall, it's probably just going to keep dropping. OK, 
So whenever we got this structure bank, knowing that the market created a floor at this point, right? And it wasn't a big structure break, right? You can see it, it wasn't, you know, like a gigantic uh, break above, but it broke above nonetheless. So this point right here, this is basically what gave us the ability to be like, okay, you know what? This market might start working its way back up, okay? Now, the next thing I want to be able to utilize is going to be our Fibonacci, okay? So as y'all know, from being on this call, it's a few different Fibonaccis that I use. It's, it's only two, but both of them are very effective. So, you know, the classic Fib, right, is going to be, well, it's definitely not that. So the classic Fib is going to be this right here. All right. So this is going to be the classic Fib, right? The Fib that we're accustomed to that gives us, you know, the actual retracements and whatnot. So. If you know anything about the Fibonacci, you know, once we identify that we are looking to trade a continuation or trade with a certain trend, we first have to have a retracement or a pullback of some shape and or form. OK, so what I usually like to look for is I like to be able to look for a Fib retracement within the 61.8 to the 88.6 zone. And as you guys can see, we actually had a couple, right? We had a pullback here, extension, had a pullback here, extension. Had a pullback here, extension. Had a pullback here, extension. And it had a pullback here, extension. So there's two different ways to look at exactly what you guys are seeing right now. In some instances, the more times a zone gets hit, the weaker it gets. I'm gonna repeat that one more time. In some instances, the more times that you see a zone get hit, the market keeps coming back to that zone, even if it's reacting it could be uh, insinuating that that zone is getting weaker because what you don't necessarily want is a market to just keep coming back, right? Now, in this instance, every time it came back, you know, it went up. So that's actually showing us this zone is actually pretty strong. On top of that, what did the market do within this zone? It actually broke structure again. So once again, if we're focusing on structure, right, which is what we're doing, then the thing that we're going to know, wait, the thing we're going to notice is this structure area, right, which formed the initial high to have us looking in that direction, got broken again, right? Barely, but it got broken again. So this is another example of the market saying, hey, hey, I'm about to go up, bro. If you want to hop on the ride, you better come. Hey, right? It's trying to give you a signal. So we had two major structure breaks. We had this one right? And then the market came back and broke this one. So keep in mind, the market never came back and broke below this low. This is how you guys are defining that this is still looking like an upward trend, right? Because the market never came back and broke this initial low, which means we are still looking to continue going up. So from all this being said, right, I was able to be like, okay, you know what? You know, overall, I'm doing a counter trend trade because the overall market is a downtrend. But in a smaller perspective, I can look for a short term buy. OK, now from that opportunity, the next thing that I actually started locking in on. Let me actually rewind this back to where the market was whenever we took the trade. Uh, we was about right here. It was about right. Chill. Right. Chill. All right. But. Cool. So, all right, Beth. So this is basically what the market looked like at the time that I came to the chart and I was marking it up. Um, all right, there we go. So we were basically in this zone right here. Okay. So one of the next things I like to do is I like to be able to utilize my, um, what I want to say, my indicator. So one of the indicators I like, you, two of the indicators I like using is the RSI and the TDI. Um, in 2022, I'm going to finally make a video um, going over how to use a TDI, which is this. And um, I guarantee it's going to make a difference in you guys' it's trading, assuming that you utilize it the proper way. Some of y'all may not use it at all. Who knows? But I'm going to finally make that video so I can start teaching y'all. But um, anyway, so with the RSI, um, we already know the RSI for what I like to look for. I like to be able to see the extremes being hit. What I mean by that, anytime this white line comes outside of the purple box, um, in my personal opinion, that means that the market is trying to tell us it might be getting ready to be on and popping, okay? So if I exit the purple box to the upside, that means that the upside momentum is slowing down and or weakening, 
and I could possibly be positioning myself to look for shorts. If the market comes out to the downside, that means the downside momentum is weakening and I could be positioning myself to look for some type of long opportunity. Short and long obviously just mean buy and sell, okay? So we actually have a situation um, right here to where the market didn't necessarily uh, violate the extremes, but you can see how close it came. Now, in certain instances, whenever I'm using this method, uh, for my style of trading, I'm not always going to have the extremes be hit on some of these setups because the main setups I want to see the extremes get hit is stuff like this. So like if it's creating like a floor or a ceiling, that's usually whenever using this is going to make more sense. This is kind of like in a range. So this is like in the middle. So this move is not at a peak. It's not at a low. So it doesn't necessarily have to actually give me the extremes. When I'm looking for the extremes to be violated, as I'm going to actually show you guys on the CHF JPY trade, it's usually based off a ceiling or a floor being set. This is not setting a ceiling or a floor. So this is not as big of a deal. Um, the other thing as well, too, is I do not have divergence, which um, is also not, you know, super big deal uh, just for like this specific um, style. Because like I said, if I'm not looking for a ceiling or a floor, the divergence and the, um, the extremes being hit is not as important. Um, of a method to me being able to look at the setup. But like I said, whenever I show you CHF JPY, um, we'll be able to have that, that back. But without worrying about this, um, we're just gonna focus on, you know, saying looking at the naked chart. So from looking at the naked chart, there's a couple of different things I noticed, okay? So what I notice is the market is creating, um, you know what I'm saying? Basically, I like to call these like little shelves. So notice as the market is trending up, Neither one of these lows is being broken, right? So up, up, up. So each one of these is like a stepping stool letting you know, right, that the market wants to continue going higher. On top of that, what do we keep getting? We keep getting more breaks of structure, right? With this wick, we also broke this structure lever over here. So, um, you know, we can obviously see the market is trending up. We have, I always get lower highs and higher lows confused, but, um, Higher lows. Yeah, these are higher lows. So basically, had a brain fart. All right, so these would be higher lows right here. Um, basically, insinuating each one of these, each one of these lows is higher than the next. And this is what you can utilize to be able to determine, you know, is the market trending up or trending down? Lower lows or lower highs would be a downtrend. Higher lows would be an uptrend. Okay. So now that we actually have this footprint showing that the market is continuing to go up, right? We also had this break of structure, right? Which is called a BOS. Had that as well too. Everything is looking like it's making sense. So the thing that I really want to start focusing on is usually like I tell you guys, one of the big things I like to be able to look for is some type of impulsive move, right? The impulsive move is usually going to be our trigger. So this is about a 92 pip move, all right? Um, and within that impulsive move, you guys got not here long enough, you already know what my next step is. So what I like to be able to do is I like to be able to look for my trigger or entry candle for me personally, it's going to be an engulfing candle for you. It may be something different, different people look for different candle formations, maybe you're looking for a doji. Maybe you're looking for three crows, maybe you're looking for a railroad, right? If you don't know any of those terms, I just said, you guys might want to start typing into your candlestick patterns, okay? I don't honestly use any of those candlestick patterns. I just focus on the engulfing candle, but it's definitely important to know. Look, even on my screensaver, I got some different candlestick patterns, right? I got cord of wood. I got morning star, evening star, railroad tracks, so on and so forth. So you guys want to be able to make sure you surround yourself with these patterns so that you understand and you see it in real time. These patterns mean nothing to you if you do not notice them in real time. If you're seeing it after the fact, that's cool for studying purposes. But if you want to make the money, you need to be able to identify this stuff in real time as it's happening. So from this impulsive move, I usually start working my way up to see if within this impulsive move, I have some sort of engulfing and or institutional candle. The first one that I see is going to be right here, right? Obviously, if you guys don't know what an engulfing candle is, it's basically going to be this, right? So whenever you see a big candle right next to a small candle, right? This candle is usually going to be bullish. The small candle is going to be bearish. This is basically exactly what we want to be able to look for, okay? And within this candle is whenever I would be looking for some type of entry, right? So I'm going to start working my way up. 
working my way up. And honestly, we ended up getting to the four hour. So I don't need to go any further than the four hour because the four hour, excuse me, was actually our entry candle. So from the four hour time frame, I see that we actually have our engulfing candle. So for me, this is usually whenever I stop and I start diving in a little bit more because as I said, this is my entry candle. If I do not see an engulfing candle, I have no entry. I just got to wait. And um, maybe they'll eventually give me one. Maybe they won't. So this engulfing candle is now what I'm about to focus on. So now we're about to start looking for our entry, okay? So the first thing that I do, right? If you've been on this call enough, you already know, literally, y'all should know step for step what I'm about to do. I'm going to start off and I'm going to first look for our 50%. So the 50% of a candle, um, of an engulfing candle specifically, is going to be very important because it serves as the sweet spot. Um, you know what I'm saying? A sensitive spot is going to be, you know, equilibrium. And that's a lot of times where the market is going to find itself retracing to. But it always has to be understood the market does not actually have to retrace to the 50%. The 50% is considered a deeper retracement. Within this candle, technically, all the market needs to do is just hit the opening. This would be considered the opening. So if the market hits this, it doesn't actually have to come all the way down here. It would be nice if it did, but it doesn't. So one of the things that I started learning is I can't just automatically look for an entry at the 50% because if I did, I would honestly miss a crap ton of setups. And, you know, whenever I initially started, you know, utilizing this style of trading, I was missing a lot of setups and I was tight. Oh, I was tight. I'd wake up the next day and be like, bro, like, come on, man. So I had to figure out, okay, what is a good way for me to be able to actually get into this trade? but feel like I'm not like forcing an entry. My entry is not too aggressive, right? I got you. So that is where the other Fibonacci comes in, right? So that is the 50% Fib. This one is going to be the regular Fib that we were just using earlier. So bam. All right, so now we got this Fib, okay? And within this Fib, let me go ahead and get rid of all this shit. And within this fib, right, this is where I can actually look for a precise entry. So the thing that I've usually taught y'all is you can actually draw a entry zone. So you can draw the entry zone from the opening right here to the 50% of that candle. And within this zone, when the hell did this turn green? The hell? And within this zone, I think like the colors, I never actually changed this color purple are y'all good um can y'all still hear me it keeps saying like my internet connection keeps going unstable drop a one in the chat if y'all can still hear me or is it like phasing out y'all let me know because it keeps um it keeps saying that y'all let me know though. maybe i'll make this yellow yeah that's cool all right but y'all can hear me okay cool so basically what I want to do is I want to be able to create an entry zone. So from the opening of this candle to the 50%, this would be considered an entry zone. So within the zone is, I mean, exactly what it sounds like. You could be looking for an opportunity for an entry. Okay. Um, now, there's a couple of different ways you could play it, right? You could be the person that waits for the market, you know, to give a retracement back to the zone and then wait for some sort of candlestick rejection, right? And then if it gives you that candlestick rejection, you can wait and execute by market. Now, obviously, that is going to take a lot of patience. It's going to take a little bit of time, and it's going to involve you, um, you know, being able to have a good trigger finger. Because if you just sit there and watch it and it starts taking off, but you never get in, you're going to miss the whole thing. So what I like to do is I like to be able to comfortably use a pending order, not buy stop, not sell stop. I only use buy limit and sell limit. It is very rare that I do a market execution, okay? So buy limit and sell limit is how I like to be able to trade because I don't have to sit here and look at the chart. I don't have to stay awake. I can go to sleep and know that if the market hits that area, you know, given that, you know, spread doesn't, you know, hold me over, <laughs> you feel me? It's going to put me in a trade. And that's basically what happened with CHF JPY. CHF JPY, because um, I usually, well, I try to take like a, a nap for like a couple hours before I get on this call because I usually um, try to stay up the majority of the night. Um, so whenever I took my little nap and then I woke back up like 45 minutes before this call, I saw that it put me in a trade. So that's why I like to be able to use pending orders. But anyways, though, the way that you can look for your precise entry 
this is how I've been breaking it down to you guys. So within this entry zone, right, you want to be able to look for one of your FIB retracements. So you have the 71%. You also have the 78%, okay? It is totally up to you on which one of these you would like to utilize as your entry. Now, from personal experience, because I backtest a lot, and if you guys are not backtesting, you don't know what backtesting is, you need to get tapped in. Backtesting is how you become the trader that you want to be. If you don't, backtesting is like watching film in sports. If any of you guys watch sports, so you understand the reference of watching film for basketball, football, being able to understand the players, this is the same concept. You got to be able to backtest. Otherwise, you go get out on the field and you ain't going to know what the hell going on. You feel me? So for me, I like to be able to go with the fib retracement closest to the opening, right? Reason being is the same concept. The 78% is going to be a better entry. Um, it is going to be a smaller stop loss and all that other stuff, but it's a deeper retracement. The market does not always have to give you that deep retracement. That has to be understood. Some situations it will, and whenever it does, it's lit. Other situations to where it doesn't, you just go sit there sad, missing out on the whole damn trade. So what I ended up doing was I went with the entry off the 71%, okay? And I'm going to show you guys how this actually ended up playing out, right? So I look for my entry right here, right? This is where I got my entry. And now what I'm about to do is I'm about to press play and I'm gonna let you guys see how this panned out, right? So I'm gonna actually put this at both of these so you guys can see which one of these actually activated. But this is where our entry was, right? So I'm gonna let it play just like so. Bam, 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 bam. Ladies and gentlemen, drop a two in the chat if you see how the entry that I picked ended up getting activated, but the one that would have been a deeper retracement got missed. Let me get you a type of two in the chat if you see it. And this is exactly what I'm referencing. So this is not by mistake that I'm, I'm speaking the way that I'm speaking. This is from a lot of back tests. And you guys don't understand over the course of me trading how many entries I have missed. <laughs> I've missed a lot, like a lot. And I used to be so frustrated because it's like, bro, it's got to be a way that I can get an entry to where every time I take a trade, I know for a fact my entry should activate, right? And using this Fibonacci retracement is pretty much how I came to that conclusion. So look at how pinpoint, quote unquote, sniper entry that was. And then look what the market did, right? Ultimately, it ended up pulling all the way back. But like I said, we got our partials, adjusted our stop loss to break even. We already made our money before it pulled back. So this was, you know, a beautiful setup. I was really, I was really happy with this setup. So this is exactly what it looks like, right? So I ended up, as you guys can see, look at where our entry was, okay, right here. Beautiful, right? And then it ended up going all the way up. So great trade. Um, I'm going to leave this on the screen because um, also the other thing I want to be able to show you guys, like I said, like my YouTube channel, you guys are going to be able to study your ass off of because on my YouTube channel, I make a, I upload the videos for these calls. I also upload the videos for the setups that I take. So look, this is an example of one of these calls that I did that I uploaded, you know, right here. If you guys actually want to go back, this is from the 30th. This is the day that I sent out the trade. So if you guys want to go see me actually do it in real time, you can go watch that video. Also, I'll let you guys know whenever we take trades. So look, caught 120 pips on AED CAD, right? I also let you know we missed out on trades. Damn, I missed out on 180 pips. I also let you know whenever we lose trades. So it's full transparency. Lost 48 pips on gold. So I'm literally documenting everything on here, just so you guys know, right? Um, but anyway, so that was a great example of a really good trade um, to end off the year. That was absolutely amazing. Now, uh that's something else let's go to oh it's looking pretty sexy right now i'm not gonna lie to you it's looking pretty pretty sexy right now uh, okay so now we're about to go over chf jpy which is a trade i did that we are currently in uh, we are up about 20 pips. Be honest with you, I ain't mad at that at all. Okay. So what we're about to do is we're about to go ahead and pull that up on a separate data feed, just like we did with G uh, Euro USD. Okay. 
And we already been out here about 40 minutes. So we got about, you know, 20 minutes or so left before I get ready to hop off. All right, best CHF JPY. Let me rewind this back to where we were when I called it out. Would have been about here. All right. Go to the one hour. And we basically go repeat the process all over again. So once again, as I said, I usually start from the one hour time frame. I'm going to identify the overall market trend. And then I'm going to also identify, am I going to trade with the trend? Am I going to trade against the trend? So obviously this one is, I mean, is as obvious as the last one. This is obviously an uptrend. And it is, there is no if, ands, or buts about it. This is an uptrend. The market is clearly bullish as hell, right? But does that mean I'm going to take a buy? Not necessarily. This is actually an example I was looking for a sell. So let's actually go into it. So if we're looking at the overall setup, okay, we can see the market is, like I said, it's extremely bullish, right? Extremely. But the thing that we also have to understand is the market has to give some type of retracement. So all of this upward momentum, right? You got to get some types of retracements, okay? So if you notice the market taking off from here to here, is almost 500 pips with little to no retracement. Like there's not, you know, you might could say something like this before it went up, but that's not really like a, a quote unquote retracement. So the market really hasn't had any significant retracement. So the thing you can start identifying is, um, obviously you have to be at a certain level of trading because technically you, you'd probably be guessing and you might just end up hurting yourself. But once the market has trended so long in a direction, it literally has no choice. It has to eventually give some type of deep retracement. If Even if it keeps going up, it's like, bro, you got to give me some type of retracement, bro. It's like, you can't just keep going up. You feel me? So that's pretty much how I was looking at this. I was like, okay, the market looks like it might be getting overextended, right? If you look to the left, these are the things I like seeing. If you look to the left, there's literally nothing to the left. Like once the market broke this high, you know, maybe if I start going up on higher time frames, but I like focusing on a time frame that I'm actually on. The market broke this high and there's literally nothing to the left of this. Look at this. Look at this. I got to do all this. Like there's nothing over here, right? So this is an extreme high, which also, like I said, could be indicating that the market is getting exhausted. Next thing we can do, right, is look at our indicators in this case. Now, this is whenever I was just telling you on the last example, this is the best time to be able to utilize the RSI whenever you're creating a ceiling or a floor. If you're just like somewhere in the middle, it's not as effective, right? It's more so when you're creating a ceiling or a floor. So notice we are creating a ceiling up here, okay? The market ended up running, created this ceiling. And then as you can see, it gave a strong impulse move to the downside. Now what we can see is we can start identifying some of the clues, okay? What's one of the clues gonna be? As I said before, the market, um i mean basically this entire time as you can see the market was hitting the extremes right so obviously the market kept trending up and that's one of the things that you got to understand it doesn't mean as soon as the white line comes outside the purple box just randomly sell it it has to be within context of like some other confirmation so this is showing that the market keeps hitting the extremes but the market keeps going up so this can mean that the market is going to eventually fall out the sky but it's just not ready yet so as you develop the patience, you'll see whenever we got up here, right? The market at the same time was giving us something that I love, which is divergence. So, you know, as you guys can see from here, right to here, the market is going down, but in those same spots, right? The market is going up. And that's one of the things I really love about divergence. Divergence, as I've told you guys time and time again, and some of you regulars have seen this time and time again. This is one of the best identifiers whenever the market is about to give you that switch, okay? So the same points, okay? From here to here, the market is clearly going up, but obviously in that same instance on our indicator from here to here, the market is going down, right? So that divergence, it is not by any type of coincidence that after this happened, right, you see the market give that aggressive move to the downside. So with being able to gather this information, now I'm being able to form a bias. Okay, now it's actually starting to make sense for me to look for a counter trend trade, knowing that this market is crazy bullish, right? So we have all those confirmations. 
cool. One other thing that I never really spoke on on this call. One thing I want you guys, I don't trade off of this, but this is something to look at. So obviously this is an engulfing candle. Obviously this is something I would be looking for for a buying opportunity. The thing that you guys don't realize is the same way that an engulfing candle can work um, like a bullish engulfing candle can work for a buy. A bullish engulfing candle can also be effective utilizing a sell. So the thing that you guys got to understand is if you have a bullish engulfing candle, it doesn't mean every single time, so just relative. If you have a bullish engulfing candle, right? If the market does not continue going bullish after you see a big bullish engulfing candle, obviously can obviously realize this is all the way at a peak. So this is not working the same instance as if this engulfing candle was like down here, right? So if the market were to violate this candle, which means the market breaks below and closes below this candle, you could now possibly look for this candle to act as a form of resistance. So this can now be a scenario that you can be looking at, still looking at this candle, right? So this candle can now be used in reverse, which is how some people trade off of this. I personally don't look to sell off a bullish candle and I don't look to buy off a bearish candle. I look to buy off a bullish candle and sell off a bearish candle. So this can be used in the opposite, right? And this is a concept that you can look at. And this is actually what I was looking at when I was looking at this setup. I just wasn't going to take a trade off of this candle, but this is something that got to my attention. So with that being said, once again, think about what I showed you guys on the last example, Euro USD. What did I say I'd like to be able to see? Some type of impulse move, okay? Every impulse move is not going to be the same. It's not going to be the same uh, distance, the same pip count, but... I just want to see some type of significant move in the given direction that I'm looking to trade in. Similar to the last one, this is a 90 plus pip move, right? This is a 90 by 98 pip move, okay? So same thing I just did. Hold on. We got a new DeLorean card. Let me stop talking to see if we got anything. Give me one second. So we got two new ones called out. Uh, that's way too far from the aqua and I do not trade US 30. So cool. All right. So we have that strong impulsive move straight like that. Okay. Now from this impulsive move, what we want to be able to see is if we can find an engulfing candle, we want to be able to see some type of retracement for continuation. So I'm going to do the same thing I did on the last one. I'm now going to start working my way up through these time frames to see if I can find a significant candle. Now the candle I ended up finding was this right but i ended up coming back to this one so the thing i usually tell people is when i'm looking for an engulfing candle i like finding the biggest candle on the highest time frame okay so initially the candle that i have i uh i was looking at was going to be this six hour candle but this is what i want y'all to focus on the reason why i drew this yellow box notice how the body of this four hour candle okay is within this yellow box. If I go to the six hour, notice how there's still like a little bit of space. This is like losing some weight and putting the jeans on and the jeans don't fit. You feel me? Which I don't know anything about because I've been a hundred plus pounds my entire life. So everything has fit since high school. But anyway, so notice how I still got this space. So this space shows that the four hour candle, the body of it is actually bigger than this six hour candle, even though the six hour is a bigger time frame. So as I said, I want to find the biggest body candle on the highest time frame. So if the four hour candle is bigger than the six hour candle, I'm going to go with the four hour candle. OK, so that's basically how I was able to come to the conclusion that I'm going to use this four hour candle, as you all see, because the body of the candle is bigger than the six hour candle. OK. Even though the six hour candle is one candle, the four hour candle is a whole nother candle that got started and kept dropping. That doesn't really matter though, okay? So now what am I gonna do, guys? I'm gonna do the same thing I showed you guys on Euro USD, right? And as you guys see, my process is extremely similar. That's the thing that y'all wanna be able to get to the point. You wanna be able to have the same steps, the same confirmations for all your setups. I didn't realize whenever I was getting to where I am now, too many of my setups look completely different. Like. One of them joints look like this. The other one look like this. The other one, a lot of my setups basically look exactly the same. So what am I finna do now? Now I'm finna get the 50%, the same way I got the 50% on the Euro USD whenever I found my entry candle. So I'm gonna start off, right? I'm gonna get the 50%. 
And the thing I want you guys to understand, even though I'm not actually using the 50%, I just want to know where it is, okay? Because you might be like, what's the point of uh, getting a 50% if you're not actually looking to enter there? I just want to know where it is on the candle. So it kind of gives me a relative, you know, just kind of relative. I just want to know like where it's at, right? Now, the next thing, like I said, I'm going to use the Fib extension, okay? So right here. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drop my entry zone from the opening to the 50%. Now in this example, notice we only have one option, right? In the last example, we had two different fib zones and this one, we only got one within our entry zone. Cause like I said, none of these other ones matter if they are not in the entry zone. All these other fib retracements for this example are irrelevant. The only one that matters is the fib that's within the entry zone, which is the 78.6, okay? So that is exactly where I would be looking for an entry at, right there at the 78.6, okay? Get rid of that. So I'll be looking for an entry at that 78.6 zone. Bam, just like that, okay? And from here, as you guys can see, if I let this play out, obviously the market hasn't really gone nowhere because we're just now in the trade. You can see, another quote-unquote sniper entry right minimal drawdown now don't get it twisted every trade is not gonna be this pretty some of them joints might pull all the way back and then that's cool right i don't get attached to sniper entries i don't get attached to trades that are in drawdown as long as the trade is profitable i don't give a damn what it does right now you know i would like it to not be in a lot of drawdown but if it never hits my stop loss ultimately in the grand scheme of things that shit don't matter um but yeah so that's that and, you know, if we come back to the setup, here's where we currently are right now. If I look at the one hour time frame, you guys can see, um, you know, it actually threw another engulfing candle, which is a good sign. Hopefully it keeps dropping. But I never get too excited on anything. I don't I don't have any attachment to a trade until I'm at break even or his take profit, whichever one comes first. Just being in profit. None of this shit matters. This trade can literally on the next candle shoot all the way up and go hit stop loss. It can happen. I'm not saying it will, but it can. So don't that's that's one thing i learned quick don't don't start getting hyped just because you're getting profit that shit is not real because you can just easily you know get depressed as soon as it pulls all the way back so just be emotionless i don't care about anything that's happening until i get in a break-even situation or it has take profit as of right now it's cool that we're in profit i got a sniper entry but it hasn't actually done anything yet i'm not at the point where i can take money off the table i'm not at the point where i can adjust my stop loss to break even none of that so I actually need to be able to see this continue dropping uh, for me to be able to have the confidence to be able to be like, you know what, this was actually a successful trade. Now, with that being said, um, yeah, this is basically the setup that we're currently in. I broke that all the way down. Um, the one thing I don't really do, I don't necessarily um, put in a lot of effort to go over like my take profits and stuff like that, just because I don't know. One thing I learned, I don't know why it's like this in trading educators don't really break down their take profits. They just break down stop loss, entry, market structure, stuff like that. So I'm kind of just going off of that. Like almost every educator I see, they're not really going over why they put their take profit right there. They just go put it there and then I guess you just got to figure it out. So um, I'm not really finna do that. I'll, I'll make like a YouTube video for that, but it's, I don't want to say it's a waste of time, but it's not necessary just because like I said, I don't really see that many people covering why they're putting their take profits there so if any of you ever wonder why i never talk about what, why i put my targets where i put them that's pretty much why none of the people i learned from do it so i feel like i don't need to do it but anyways though um you know you guys see the entry um you know obviously the stop loss if you, any of you guys are new to this type of trading side the stop loss is very straightforward your stop loss is always going to go right above that engulfing candle for a sale if it's a buy it's going to go right below very straightforward um but yeah um, the last thing I'll talk about is a possible setup I might send out. No, nah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to just wait. Because uh, one thing that I learned is I actually don't want to talk about a setup if I haven't officially called it out because I can just save that for another day. I don't know what the hell just happened. Okay. But this is pretty much going to be it. Um, USD Chef. As you can see, I got it marked. I don't really have it marked up like that, honestly. Um. And I don't even know if this is going to pull back. It could just keep going higher, which is also why I don't feel like talking about it because it might not even happen. So uh, if I actually send this out, this would just be something I covered tomorrow or something like that, but I'm not actually going to take my time to go over that. 
Man, I don't know why my laptop is moving so slow right now. All right, there we go. But uh, that's pretty much it, guys. That is basically it. Um, are any of y'all in Euro or any of y'all in CHFJPY? Let me know. Drop a one in the chat. Are any of y'all in this or am I in this by myself? Are any of y'all in CHFJPY with me? Or am I in this by myself? Y'all let me know. Let your boy know in the chat. Let me know. Y'all in this? Anybody in CHFJPY with me? Or am I rocking this solo? Y'all let me know in the chat. Let me know. Am I by myself or do I got some company? Because I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm the only one that's looking at my MetaTrader in this blue right now. I have absolutely no idea. All right, it's all good. Just make sure y'all tapped into my Telegram, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, yeah, I want to be able to make sure everybody is able to capitalize. Because one of my goals is, like, I want my signal chat to be lit. Like, I'm not the most uh, – I don't have – I'm not going to be sending out the most trades and all that type of stuff, but – um it, it and a lot of these are going to be swing trades so if any of you guys were never comfortable holding a trade you know more than a day you are about to get comfortable rocking with me right so i've i've held trades two three days a week right it just depends right i, I can't predict how long it's going to take all these are higher time frame yeah i would like it to happen in the same day is it always going to be like that definitely not okay definitely not now the thing i would like you guys to do if any of you guys on the call which i know most of y'all are if you're an i am this is what I'm about to do. This is what I recommend y'all do. Um, you know, start tapping into these sessions. Like my style of trading, I basically, I mean, primarily the, the man guy that I really learned my style of trading from just because he actually has a boot camp um, in his favorites is going to be John Dollar from the Steady team. So this is definitely one of the people that I owe a lot of my skill set to as far as trading, psychology, um, how to look at the market. But don't get it twisted. I don't trade exactly like him. And that's one thing I want to be able to teach people is you're probably not going to end up trading exactly like the person that you learn from. So don't get caught up in that. I used to get caught up in trying to trade exactly like the educators that I'm learning from. That actually can be detrimental. What you want to do is you want to take bits and pieces from different people and figure out what works for you emotionally. The biggest thing that I found out is every style of trading emotionally just does not work for everybody. Like if you find yourself getting hella anxious, that's what you want to work on. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's, that's basically what I want to say. They're going to come on basically in about like four minutes. So whenever I hop off of this, this is exactly what I'm about to get on, right? Got to be a student. I am never going to be at the point where I just feel like I don't need to learn anymore because um, that just doesn't make sense. I'm not financially anywhere close to where I want to be. But with that being said, it's pretty much it, guys. I appreciate everybody for being on the call as usual. Um, as I said, the call is recorded. will be uploaded on YouTube. Sometime later on in the day, I usually wait. I'm not going to upload it like right now. I usually wait, you know, until actually people wake up and stuff like that. So um, I will see you guys again tomorrow. Um, obviously, we're going to be back on tomorrow so we can go back over CHFJPY to see what it did. Stop loss, take profit, break even, or if it's just consolidating or whatever it does. So I'll see you guys tomorrow, same time, um, 1 a.m. Central, 2 a.m. Eastern. Appreciate everybody for tapping in. See you when want to be it. Peace.